Recently in one of my projects, we had the following challenge. This project is about performing some analysis on the source code of the other projects we have in our company. Therefore it queries some data from our version control system, the Team Foundation server. Now the organization is transitioning to Git. As we have many repositories, more than 50, this transition happens step by step. For this reason, and as the analysis includes some historical data, this project needs to support both version control systems, TFS and Git, in parallel for some time. How can we achieve this without increasing complexity? The simplest possible solution of course would be to use both implementations, the one accessing TFS repositories and the one accessing Git repositories directly in the application logic, the analyzer. Generally speaking, with this approach we are converting the application logic from providing a variation point, which allows injecting a single different implementation of iSource control, to providing an extension point, which allows adding another different implementation of iSource control. To follow the open-close principle and generalize this design even further, we could change the application logic to even accept a collection of iSource control objects. But this change not only adds complexity to this class, but also violates the single responsibility principle, as now the analyzer additionally to its existing logic has to manage the existence of multiple source control implementations. Furthermore, if iSource control is needed in multiple classes, then this approach will end up in unnecessary code duplication. Another approach could be to use some implementation of the factory or the service locator pattern. Basically, we could provide an interface, iSource control provider, from which the application logic can request the proper implementation of iSource control. This could certainly work, but implies that we need to provide some information, which could be used by the iSource control provider implementation to decide which implementation of iSource control to return in which case. Looking at the iSource control interface, this might be easily possible in cases where a change set ID is provided, but might be a bit more difficult in other cases. Luckily, there's another design pattern which would fit even better, the composite design pattern. The composite design pattern allows us to treat a group of objects in the same way as a single instance of the same type of object. Most tutorials apply the composite pattern to data structures forming a tree, like a tree of documents for example. But I frequently use this pattern in exactly such cases we just discuss, where I need to convert a one-to-one -one variation point to a one-to-many extension point. So let's explore how this could be done step by step. First we need a common interface. In our case we already have one, iSource control, which already provides an abstraction to the concrete implementation accessing the Team Foundation server. Now we have to make sure that it is abstract enough for the second implementation. Taking a closer look we realize that this is not yet the case, because unlike TFS, Git does not use integers as commit IDs, but strings. We could change the interface to use string, as this would allow us to represent string and integer based IDs, but this would result in a design which is not very explicit. Instead, let's create a small value object to represent each ID type explicitly. In functional programming, we would call such objects discriminated unions. Of course we now also have to adapt the existing implementation of the iSource control interface. Throwing an exception in case the wrong ID type has been passed is of course not a nice solution. So we will fix this design soon. For now the interface is ready to introduce the second implementation, which provides access to the Git repositories. I have prepared this implementation already, and it is quite similar to the TFS implementation. So we don't have to go into much detail here. 
Instead, let's implement the composite source control now. First, we need to provide the other two implementations as dependencies. As already discussed, providing both explicitly as parameters would limit the extensibility and violate the open close principle of this class. So let's use a collection right away. Okay, so how do we resolve the correct implementation to call? Wherever possible, we simply don't. And instead, we ask all the source control implementations and return the union of all results. And in case of APIs which provide a single return value, we have to decide. A strategy which is often used is first one wins, which means the first valid value which is returned will be returned overall. To make it even more explicit what a valid value is, we will use another design technique, the option type. If you are not familiar with the option type and you are curious what it is about, then make sure you watch till the end. Let's quickly change the iSource control interface and the implementations as well. At that point we can now also use the option type to improve the handling of those cases where an unsupported ID type was passed. Of course we will apply the same changes to the git source control implementation as well. And here we go. Our application logic supports multiple version control systems at the same time. And apart from the interface design improvements we made along the way, we didn't have to change the application logic itself and also didn't edit any complexity. So keep the composite pattern in your toolbox for the next time you want to add extensibility to a component. And if you now want to know more about the option type and how your design could benefit from its usage as well, then check out this video here.